If you have any questions, you can go ahead and chat um, or on mute yourself and you can ask a question. Okay, the first thing that we're going to be doing is just kind of going over uh, the EMS reports that are under the reports option. Um, again, we don't have anything that's similar to Burdett who were used to that in classic, um, but the closest thing we have at the moment um, would be uh, these reports here, the employee report, and then the position, which is your position in compensations together. So for the EMS report, um, I'll go ahead and just run one so you can see it and get it running here because it might take a little bit. Um, on the employee screen, which is under core, everybody that is marked as report to EMIS, as long as that check, that is checked, they will show on this report. Um, now, if an employee has an issue that something's not correctly entered right in all the fields that are reportable for EMIS, um, you could get an error. And this is on my um, testing data, so I don't have one, but in the EMIS um, report, I just wanna show you kind of what you're gonna get. If you do get an error, you're gonna get this um, error message right here. And it's error, and you're gonna get that on both both reports, position and employee. And if you do get that error, you can go to um, the app log under monitor and it will show as an error. And here, under here, you can decipher. And if you can't read that, that's understandable. You can copy that and send that to us and we can go ahead and send that to our programmers and they can go ahead and decipher where, where the issue lies for an employee if you can't, can't read that. So, um, cause that is, has a little bit of different jargon for people that are not programmers. So, but that is an option um, to send to um, here at SSDT that we can help you with that if you can't decipher that. But that's where you would find if there is an error, this is, would be where your start would be. So um, also for them to, to be on this report, um, they, any of the employees cannot be archived. So you wanna make sure that if they're supposed to be reported that they're not archived or on the employee side. Okay. So like I said, I ran that EMIS and that's kind of what your report will look like. And it just shows the EMIS ID, employee name and employee number. So they can kind of go through that and see if maybe um, they don't have enough employees or if somebody's missing, they can probably catch it through here. Okay, and the next one would be the position, which is including your compensation information and your position information. And again, in order for employees to show up on this report, they need to be set to report to EMIS on both of those screens. So both EMIS is on um, the position and compensation have to be checked. And again, there's only one error message for them for this report. You will never see any other errors. So on both reports, like I said, you will get this EMIS error if anything is wrong with one of your employees that the information wasn't entered correctly or something. Um, again, then use then go ahead and get that um, exception detail for us and go ahead and send that to us and we can get that to the programmers and they can decipher that for you. So here is just an example of this report. Okay, so in order for the EMIS position report for employees, um, actually you have to have the employee position and compensation. So all three of those will have to be marked in order to report to EMIS in order for them to be included. Um, if one of the compensations is archived, then it won't show on that. So you wanna make sure if, you, if an employee needs to be included to make sure that the employee and the compensations are not archived. And another thing is um, if you have like an employee that has a separation date, um, if, if since we're in 2021, 
And so that date range is going to be from July 1st of 2020 to June 30th of 2021. Um, and if an employee has the position record and it has a separation date that falls within the prior fiscal year, the system knows that it has to pick up that employee from the prior fiscal year, which is 2019 through the 2020. Um, it knows that it needs to be included on the staff collector to be reported as separation as for one time. So as long as that date is um, within that prior fiscal year, it will be included to be reported. And also another thing we wanted to go over, um, these positions um, right here, these code, these are coming from the compensation screen. So if you wonder where those are coming from, I'll just pull up one here. Oh, non-contract, but um, local contract code would be right here for the non-contract and for a contract. And what that is, is just what after you report it to run it through the staff collector one time, it gives them a, a number and a letter stating that it has been pulled through the data collector one time. Now, mine doesn't show that because mine is test data and it's never been ran through the collector. So if you do see that, that's what you're seeing is those, those numbers. And one thing I wanted to show kind of how, what it does and I just took this off some uh, a district data. So you can see like this position for these, this is one employee, 1A, 02, and 2A. And when I went to the employee dash screen, I kind of looked and I could see where the legacy one would be their 1A, because that probably was ran through the collector at one time. The next one would have been the legacy two, which is the 2A. Now the 02, is going to show you that is the new fiscal year contract that's sitting out there that probably has not been sent to the collector yet. So that is kind of what, if you're seeing these different ones, that's kind of what you're seeing. And you're seeing like an 02 thrown in there, 04. It's probably because it's a brand new job that was created and it has never been sent to the collector. So that's what that means. So if you have, ever have questions on that and you just need, um, you have more you can give us a let us know and we can help you with that but that's I just kind of wanted to show you that that that's kind of what that means when you're just seeing um, those sitting in between there like that for employee because this this employee is all the same employee so okay any questions on these reports if you have anything Okay, so the next thing I was, uh, we were going to show you was um, the report options. And these are out there for all under the wiki. And we included, and I, um, it's under the training, redesign, shared and training documentation. And this can be very helpful. Um, you can copy these and use these and send these to your districts. And they can use these to um, help create reports to determine um, who is going to be on the position record or who is on the employee record. And we also have mass change positions in there um, to clear any of the EMIS contract fields, hours, amount, days, um, if this needs to be done prior to like next year after fiscal year is run, you can use this to clear everything to get ready for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, another one is your EMIS. Um, if you need to change your mass change, you can use this to report the EMIS flag on the compensation record. So that way you can get those um, off of there and you can um, get those unchecked for the EMIS report. Report to EMIS. Um, maybe you need to increment experience years for the upcoming year. You can also do that. You use this, this right here. And this definition um, for the mass change is to increment it, the total experience and the authorized experience on the employee record. So this could be very come in very handy for your districts uh, once they need to do that for the upcoming fiscal year um, for their 
employees, they can use this. Um, also, we have a new contract, EMS reportable. Um, if you have contracts um, that you're creating and you don't, and they're all flagged, maybe reportable TMS, but you don't want those to be reportable, um, you can use this definition in new contract. Why they're sitting out there um, waiting to be activated, you can go ahead and use this and that will change that um, flag to false then. So there's a lot of different ones that you can look at here that might be very helpful. Um, the next one is the report definitions. <clears throat> the report definitions, this can be helpful for uh, your dexters um, running the um, EMIS. You can run these, there's several of them. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them that uh, Lori actually created and we have out here. Um, the first one that we'll go over is um, the EMIS demographic. And this report will help determine if any of the EMIS elements from the employee records are populated. So it will tell you if something is missing for an employee that needs to be, this will be very helpful. And this comes from the employee record. Um, the next one you could use is the EMIS active. I'm gonna find that one, positions. The EMIS active positions report. Um, this can determine on the for the employee's position records all the EMIS elements that are required for reporting. So you can use this to run everybody that um, is reportable to EMIS and what should be if something is missing, then they can go over this report and make sure that's populated before they um, send their data into the collector. Um, maybe you have some inactive positions that are reported to EMIS. We also have that here for a report. So they can run this for all their inactive positions. Maybe these are our subs or something um, inactive. And then that will um, show all the, their information and data, which needs to be if something is missing. The next one would be your EMIS active contract compensations report. And again, this will help them for any of your active contract compensations um, to make sure that these are all, um, the fields are correct and filled in before they send it to the data collector. And then we also have the non-contract compensation. So we can't get them all on the same report. So you just have to run them separately for a contract and non-contract. Okay. And then you also have any contracts, non-contracts that might be inactive. So you wanna go ahead and run that also. So those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reports that I said there, um, you can go ahead and you can um, copy these. And then you can actually, if um, I do believe they're on our checklist already, which we'll be going over here shortly, um, they're all out there ready on those reports that you can give to your districts and they can use that. Okay, um, any questions on any of these reports um, that are available to you in your districts? Okay. So the next thing we kind of wanted to show um, is in, where's my, there we are is in the appendix, oh, excuse me, it's right above appendix, and it's the USPS EMS connection. So this is just wanted to show you um, where we have a checklist here that can be used, and what they're gonna be working on right now for the final reporting in the staff collection is this one. So they just wanna make sure that they go through this checklist and make sure everything is verified for the EMIS demographic. And that it would be their employee demographic CI record. So that's the employee record in redesign. And then they just wanna verify that all their information is entered in um, correctly. And then for the, what the collection is looking at is all for the final L is all these 
options, all this data that they are collecting. So in the final one, it has added the absence days for long-term and absence days. And we've had some tickets starting to come through where the absence days and long-term illness days are not matching. So again, if you have those issues, go ahead and send us a tech and we can take a look at that. How the absence, we have figured, found out that what EMIS is looking at um, and the data is the absent days are coming from the calendar start dates. So just a reminder, make sure your calendar start dates are correct for the employee for the, for the fiscal year, because we've noticed that's kind of where we're running into some issues is the calendar start dates. I haven't been correct. So it's not counting those absent days correctly and not matching long-term illness. So just a reminder on that. Um, again, you want to make sure that your long-term illness days are in it correctly for the employee. So that, again, is 15 more or more consecutive absent days in a row for an employee. Um, you want to go through and make sure all your years of experience are correct. You're authorized, your total, and then the principal fields. And that is on the employee record. And then this is where those reports that I just showed you that this is we kind of already have them in here um, for them so they can just go ahead and click on that and 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 save that definition and and download it. So they can go ahead and just run that and then we have what each one what it verifies what you can um, look at to make sure that everything is included on that. And then for the staff employment record, um, for the final L, um, this is all the requirements that the system is looking at when, we, when it gets sent over. So you just wanna make sure that all these fields are filled in for your employees. Um, also, you wanna make sure all your supplemental contracts that are 800s um, that are filled in and make sure they have a um, position to EMIS flag is set correctly if they're supposed to be reported. Um, the next thing would be is to make sure that your CC records um, have that need to be um, re reported, make sure that they are report to EMIS is checked. And when you're in the EMIS, there it is, in your CC records, you wanna make sure this is set to report to EMIS or else it's not gonna be picked up. So you just wanna make sure when they run their extract that that is checked. For the CJ records, um, in order for it, even though it's sitting out here, in order for it to be included on the extract, um, you have to have the report to EMIS for all employee position and compensation for that employee. So if I would go ahead, and even though I have all three of these people on here, if I run the extract, I'm only going to have one person on here because I don't have all those um, all those information set for everybody. So if you're if they're running a report and they're only seeing one out of the like me three, and they're supposed to be all three, you want to make sure you go through those steps of making sure that they verify that those criteria are all set for all three screens: employee position and compensation. And also the employee cannot be archived. So even though the employee is showing on here, um, it, he could be archived, but it still shows on here. And I think we do have a ticket out there to remove employees that are archived because if, obviously if they're archived, we don't want them showing on here. So I believe that is still um, in the works of removing those employees that are archived. So that's another thing if um, you don't want them showing, um, it just could be because of that. Okay, any question on those final L reporting report? Let me go back to that and see where we're at. Mm -hmm. Did I go through everything? Um, well, also just make sure you verify attendance in your absence for the employees. And then if you need to, um, if an employee isn't showing correctly, again, you can use on the um, position screen, those EMIS related information. Um, you want to go ahead and make sure you can use those to put in any information because um, it will ignore anything in the compensation 
and go ahead and use what is in this EMIS related fields. So maybe your contract amount is different, contract work days, hours and days, um, and probably be more for if you had a mid-year contract change that they need to report the whole amount, the contract, contract amount, contract work days. But again, the option is out there to be used. Um, the next one. Okay, the next one you can use is the EMIS list reports. And again, that is uh, listed into um, on our reports. Okay, so any questions on the final um, reporting for this fiscal year checklist? And again, if you have any like added notes that you think that would be helpful to add on the checklist, we would love to hear it also, because um, we definitely could, um, we'll, we look over that and maybe we'll put that in there. So any, you know, just to help any districts out with their reporting. Okay. So the next one, after they're done running their final L reporting and the year's completed for their fiscal year, then they're gonna jump to their getting ready for their new upcoming fiscal year. So the first thing they wanna make sure that they do is update that EMIS configuration um, fiscal year. And again, that's under configuration. And then EMIA, right there. And this is where they want to make sure they change this to their upcoming new year, which will be the 2022 coming year. And we do have a, a jury issue out there to remove that little comma there, but it doesn't hurt anything. So, so the districts see that it's okay. So they just want to make sure that is their first step after they start their new reporting for the fiscal year, very important. And again, um, it's up to you guys at the ITC if you allow your districts to change that or if you send a note out to all your districts stating, make sure you go ahead and change that. Um, again, that's um, completely up to you. So then you, they're gonna wanna start following their checklist for the next year. Um, you wanna make sure they go ahead and archive any of the prior compensations. And again, they can use that mass change option that we had out here. And oops, there it is. So they can go ahead and um, archive those employees. So we wanna make sure the EMIS demographic reports, you can start running these to make sure um, maybe somebody new that has come in um, to make sure that they have all the information for your new employees um, and make sure that information is correct. And again, we included um, the checklist here of what the data collector is looking at for that initial L. And again, it doesn't do the first three for the absence that will be at the final L. And you go ahead and um, the rest of the checklist. So then you can go ahead and start importing all those other reports again and, and verifying um, to make sure all those um, fields are entered correctly and nothing is missing for any of those active positions or inactive. You have your active contracts or non-active contracts and your inactive non-contract. And then the next step would be your CK, your employment records. What exactly is the data collector looking at? For the initial L, these are all your options of what, they, what the data is looking at. The only thing it's not looking at at that time for that first round is the high quality professional development. Um, that will be looked at in the final L. So that is um, added, can be added later if, if it gets missed. Um, again, if they need to update their CZ and CJ records, um, again, it's just like the final L, just make sure they have all the information entered, make sure their um, report to EMIS is all set to yes and checked. And then 
Before they start, they wanna make sure they clear that long-term illness data for the last fiscal year, um, cause they wanna make sure that's clear. So that way they can add um, when they, at the end of the fiscal year coming up for 2022, they wanna make sure that amount is correct. We have the, um, the instructions of how they can do that using the mass change. And when they go into mass change, do they add term illness days? That employee, I believe, right? Yeah. So under employee, under mass change, um, if you allow your districts to do that, um, they have the option to go ahead and clear that long-term illness days. And they also have the change to archive flag. So there's, there's two options here um, that they can use for this option. And that it already will put it in there for you and you can just go ahead and zero it. And also the long-term or the uh, change archive flag for the employees if you need to archive them since maybe they left for left the district for that coming school year, then you can go ahead and um, you can change that. Okay, um, for the next one. And then the next thing they wanna make sure is for the upcoming school year, they can do this right away. Um, they can go ahead and start incrementing the years of experience for the employees. And again, we gave them, uh, here is uh, the instructions they can follow under employee and use the advanced query. And they can go ahead and um, increment these fields for their employees. Um, another one they can use is, can import a mass change definition that if you click on the link, this will, um, you can copy this and they can go ahead and use this to do a mass change definition. So they would just go under an employee and under mass change and they can go ahead and, and download, import this definition. You would copy that and just import that in and they can use that um, to increment the experience also. Um, the other things that they will want to do is um, you archive any prior fiscal year contracts. Um, so that way they're not going to pull into this new, into the data collector for the upcoming fiscal year. The next thing you want to do is make sure you clear any previous fiscal year value from the MIS override. And again, this can be done by going to the positions under the EMIS related. So again, you wanna make sure that all these are clear for the upcoming um, fiscal year. And again, um, they you can help them at the IC or if you um, need help through the SSDT, we can help you get a, a report created um, with the names. But these are the positions, uh, you would use the positions grid and then you can do including the number, position number, contract amount, contract work days, and hours and days. So that, so that is your um, new fiscal year, and that is for the upcoming year that they will want to start this after they finish their final L reporting. Is there any questions on that? And again, if you have anything to add to it that you think it would be helpful to a district, um, again, please send that to us and we definitely will go over it and look at it because anything um, that will help a district we are up for. Okay. And then the next one, if since this is a new coming year, maybe new teachers, new subs, things like that, um, we have a new employee EMIS element verification um, documentation here. And these are just different ones that they can run, dot JSON files, for new employees that have come in. Um, so any new employee that makes sure that all their EMIS demographic records are entered correctly, all their position records have been entered correctly, 
after they enter a new employees. And then again, if they're a contract, then you can run this for the new employees or if the employees are active, inactive, and they are non-contract compensations. So this is, can be very helpful um, to catch something that maybe was missing right away in the beginning for new employees. So just remind your districts of that option. Okay, um, I really don't have much, anything else to go over. I think the only thing that I was gonna mention, cause I, I know Lord, um, Michelle had sent out on something about um, the auditors this week, um, stating that they wanted, um, and I just wanted to bring that to your attention while we're here. Um, and the fiscal year and closing procedures, the auditor of the state report, that would be for our payroll. Um, I guess they're wanting, the subject line to be formatted in this way with the 90 year USPR replacing the nines with your IRN and the year with the four digits of the fiscal year end. So just wanna remind, um, this is something that we just updated in our documentation. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention so you can bring that attention to your districts so they know that, because I guess that's the auditors are looking for that for next year. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that in case you didn't see the email. Okay. All right, is there any questions on anything on EMIS related? Um, again, um, please send us any questions if we can help you out. There's some chat messages in the okay. chat. Let me get up here, I didn't have that open. Release updates. Um, did not know we had a release that was going to do that. I will have to look into that, patience. Okay. Yeah, I will have to look into that. Um, I was not in our last sprint meeting. I was gone. So if that was something that they talked about, I will have to get that to you. Um, usually it's manual that they have to go there and update that um, every after they uh, finish their reporting. And I believe that's how it's going to stay. But if something changes, I will definitely let you know. Um, Nancy is asking, uh, going back to the reports and mass change definitions, can you show how to navigate where to find them? Oh, sure. You know, same thing. I have the problems too, trying to find it through Wiki. Uh, let's see if I can, I can find it myself because I have it all, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that, public wiki. Nope. I have it like set to on my computer so I can go directly to it. Oh, maybe it's here. No, I will have to find a link where. I did a search on mass change definitions and it came up. Did it come up then? Okay. So you might try that. I just have the link saved. Nope. And I go directly to it. Let's say public wiki. Let's try that. Oh, right there. Yeah. So if you're in the wiki and you do a search, you can just do the mass change, redesign mass change, shared definitions. And it does come up. So thank you, whoever just told me that. I didn't think about just doing a search. I have everything saved, so. But yes, that's kind of where you can find that. So, yeah, I have a hard time kind of sometimes following through the wiki trying to figure out where everything is. So, okay. Let's see. Are most ITCs encouraging payroll staff to run the mass change since it's their data and system instead of having EMIS coordinators get and redesign a mass update? Um, 
I, I guess that is that maybe for other ITCs, um, what what does other ITCs do? Um, do they have their payroll staff run the mass changes since their data in their data and system? I don't know if anybody out there ITC can share what they do for their procedures. I guess again, it's up to the, I guess it's up to their district how they want to handle that. If they want the AMIS to do that or the payroll staff. Again, that, that's completely up to them. Um, so the years of experience be increased at the end of the end or beginning of the fiscal year. Again, that is totally up to the district. No, it's the, not. It's at the beginning of the year. Is based it based on the previous based based on the end of the previous year. So what you're reporting to EMAS in FY21 is based on what they earned through FY20. So you don't wanna change it now because you're reporting the end of FY21 and it has to reflect the experience as of the beginning of FY21. Correct, correct. So they wouldn't change it until after the final reporting period. Right. Right, correct. That is correct. Um, see, we have payroll staff run them. Okay, uh, Mary Meyer just said they have payroll staff run them or they also have who, who is responsible for staff EMIS. So again, it's just probably up to the court, up to your district. Um, and some ITC say they don't let them use mass change. They do it for them. Um, see, one says they don't have EMS coordinators doing mass changes. You're just starting to transition a few numbers of payroll staff into completing mass changes themselves. So again, um, they're at them at the ITC are doing that. So again, um, it completely is up to the ITC if they want their districts to use that mass change because that is kind of like a, a, a data tree um, in classic because they can, they can do um, a mess up um, with that. And usually that data tree was only restricted to ITC. So again, um, completely understandable if they want the mass change to, to stay that way. So, okay, great questions. Um, is there any other questions I did not answer or I can look up? Again, patients, I will definitely look into that if that is something that will um, in the future maybe, but as far as I know right now that you, they have to go and change that, that one, and that's on our checklist to make sure that's the first thing they do. Okay. Um, I believe then that is it for the EMIS reporting for the year or for this time around. And hopefully your staff data collection goes well for you. Um, and again, if you have any of those absence, long term illness issues, um, definitely look at their calendar start date first. And then from there, if you can't reissue it, please send us a ticket and we'll, we'll go ahead and get the programmers involved and we can decipher exactly where that's pulling from. So, okay. Um, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Sounds like we might get some more storms. So, all right, have a good, have a good weekend.